Hey, yo, what's up, what's up, guys? Zaid here with another episode of Zaid's Experience. As part of my 90 days of carnivore, I'm going to be giving you guys a quick update as to how my carnivore diet has been progressing. And also, I wanted to give you some info in case you guys wanted to do this carnivore diet, maybe to gain some muscle, maybe for athletic performance. So stay tuned and let's check this out. So to start things off guys, please, if you haven't already done so, subscribe to the channel. It really, really helps me out. It helps me know if you guys are liking this content or not, or if you guys are commenting down there, if you guys are giving me any type of feedback, it really helps out the channel greatly. That way I know what you guys like, what you guys don't like, what you guys want to see, or maybe something that I haven't spoken about in this channel. Please click that subscribe button, hit the bell, and leave a couple of comments down there in regards to all of that. But now, with housekeeping out of the way, I wanted to give you a progress report on my 25th day of carnivore so far. Everything has been going good. Everything has been progressively getting a lot better. I've been sleeping like a baby now at nights. I get to bed and I just pass out. I die. It's actually been a considerable change from last video, actually. It's been a lot more. I just touch the mattress and I die. I really, really like it and I feel like I'm a lot more rested and since I'm getting a lot more of a pattern going now, every day I wake up at five to go to work, do all my stuff, and every night I go to sleep anywhere from 9.30 to 10, the latest. So it gives me a pretty good amount of time to pass out and like go to sleep and do all that. So at least I get a minimum of seven hours every night but I try to shoot for eight, especially on the weekends. On the weekends, I try to wake up a little bit later if I can, but sometimes it just doesn't happen. But sleep has been getting a lot better by far. I've also been feeling because of this, I think, uh, a lot more focused. I feel a lot more focused. I feel a lot, a lot of that mental fogginess has completely lifted. I feel a lot better in that regards, though I am still kind of slow in recalling some stuff. I don't know if it might be a nutrient deficiency in some way. So if you guys know anything about that, please leave it down in the comment section. I would really appreciate the help. Uh, or it might be that the, the operator is actually broken. I don't think we can do much about it. But hopefully we can and hopefully it gets a little better with time. I've been trying to eat a couple of more organ meats. I've been trying to eat more liver and just to get any extra nutrients that my diet might be lacking. So I've been really, really on that right now. I actually just got some liver today because I hadn't had any of it this week. So we're good on that. Also, I've been on tripe <laughs> lately. I got a couple of good recipes coming on on that. If you guys wanna know about that, how to make tripe, let me know down in the comment section. It's something that I'm definitely eating a lot more of and that's kind of breaking the mundaneness of just eating liver every week because it can get a little bit boring, it can get a little mundane. So tripe is something that's been helping me out. As far as weight loss goes, and not a lot of people are very interested in that portion of the carnivore diet, the weight loss has been substantial, more so in the fact that I've been losing actual body fat. I can actually see that a lot of my limbs are getting thinned out in comparison to a lot of the bigger muscle areas. So that's definitely heading in the right direction. And the main thing that's guiding me towards that is that I'm still keeping quite a bit of muscle. So I'm not really trying to conserve muscle. It's just kind of a byproduct of the way I've been eating and what my goals are for this carnivore diet, which leads me into a completely perfect segue as to what are you guys planning to achieve with doing the carnivore diet? I know a lot of you have different goals. There's people that are doing it to just lose weight. Some people are doing it to just get healthy. Some people are doing it for maybe athletic purposes or maybe GI problems, whatever it may be. I think the goal has to be set first. In my opinion, I think that the first goal, no matter what you guys are doing, is to get healthy. And what do I mean by this? What do I mean by getting healthy? I think that it is a real shocker to the body if you've never done anything like keto maybe if you guys are coming straight from just eating a bunch of carbs and go straight into carnivore it just really hits you it takes time for your body to adapt from using carbs as a fuel source to using fats as a fuel source so you should really give your body some time and so depending on what you're doing again if you're looking this out for performance purposes i think that you're not going to get the immediate results it might take you 
a month, two, or even three to get you to a basic performance level. It all depends on everybody's body. For me, I remember that the last time I did the carnivore diet, the first 90 days, I remember I was having a really, really hard time. I was just, I was dogging it all around. It was just really hard for me because I, I didn't come from a keto background or anything like that. I just went cold turkey from eating a bunch of carbs to not eating any. And I could definitely feel the change after two months, two months in, I think it was like my 50th something day where I actually started to feel a little better. My cognition starting to get a lot better and all that. So it was multiple changes. One of these issues might be maybe you're still having trouble going to the restroom. I know a lot of people when they start the carnivore diet, they have digestion problems for like the first week and they're not going to the restroom as regularly or their stool is very loose. And one of the main reasons is because you're consuming a lot more fat in your diet than you're probably used to. Especially if you just came off cold turkey off of a carb packed diet so this should make a little bit of sense as to why it is happening but some people still keep on having that problem even after three four weeks so at that point i would really suggest going to your doctor and maybe getting a full gut panel to see if there's anything else that might be disturbing your gut your intestinal system or anything like that so like i said step number one that would be to just really, really get healthy and move from there. So now let's say you have a month into your carnivore diet, it seems to be working well, two months, three months, whatever it may be, and now let's say you wanna go for the athletic portion of it. If you wanna go for the athletic portion of the carnivore diet, it depends on what kind of activities your guys are gonna be doing. If you guys are gonna be doing stuff like sprints, if you guys are gonna be doing plyometric stuff where you're gonna be jumping off the ground, um, maybe some power cleans, a lot of that stuff that requires a lot of fast motion, a lot of energy, you're gonna have to eat for it. And what I mean by this is you're gonna have to have a really, really, really good balance of what you're eating, like the amount, the ratios of protein that you're getting in to the ratios versus fat, and the vitamins, nutrients. A lot of people think that the carnivore diet is very, very lazy because you just eat meat and it's just that you just eat meat and everything gets better and you just kind of throw it out there i completely disagree with that thought i think that the carnivore diet is actually a lot harder than a lot of other diets and here's why when you're doing something like athletic performance in that regards when you're trying to do something for power just really intense explosive power maybe like dr sean baker he he's a pretty good example of this you have to get a pretty good profile of vitamins and minerals to know that you are on point. For me, I've noticed that I have to eat liver at least three, twice a week. And if it gets too intense, three times a week. And right now I think I'm gonna start bumping it up to three times a week, period, because work is ramping up because it's the summer and in my line of work, every time that summer comes around, work goes through the roof and it gets a lot tougher, it gets a lot hotter. And plus I come in and do my workouts, I do my run and then plus my workout. So it really adds up. So I really gotta stay on point on my nutrition. Let's say I was working out on a Monday, I didn't work out. Let's say Monday through Friday I work out and Saturday and Sunday I didn't work out. If I came in on Monday, I would still come pretty refreshed from the weekend and that day would be okay. But if I slack off on my nutrition throughout the rest of the week, I'm definitely gonna feel it on that second and on that third day it's gonna be hell so I've made a point to really be on top of my nutrition and again for athletic performances you really got to be there and the way I found that it really works for me is by adding a little bit of carbs actually if you're doing a lot of static stuff maybe more into like the bodybuilding realm you won't need those carbs I don't think you really will I've tried it for a little while and it seems like a lot of the static stuff Again, like bicep curls, maybe doing some intense deadlifts, you know, going up to 405, that kind of thing. You might need a little bit of power, maybe a little bit of a push, but I don't think you need any carbs. But for explosive workouts, you really, uh, at least a small amount, if anything, at the end of your workout for recovery. Or even as a pre-workout, I've noticed that it actually works pretty well. What I've been using as carbs has been honey two tablespoons of honey as a pre-workout actually work awesome. And it all depends on when I use them. I use them whenever I'm gonna do sprints, 
that's when I really, really notice that those tablespoons of honey are really, really working. And whenever I'm gonna do anything like squats, but like really heavy squats, I've been doing them with a Smith machine lately and I've been doing them with a leg press machine. So that's been helping me out quite a bit since I can't really use my shoulders still, but they're getting there. I should be able to do it within the next month and I'll hopefully be able to record some of that in the gym. That way you guys can see that even though you guys might be doing this carnivore diet, you can still have strength, you can still have stamina, you can still have a good portion of energy. So don't be afraid of losing that. It just might take a little bit of time for you guys to adapt. Now let's say you guys were doing a little bit more of, let's say like marathon running. Something that's really, really slow for long as hell, you know? That is also something that you can definitely push with just your body fat. So just eating high amounts of fat or higher amounts of fat will definitely do the trick. But it also depends on how many days a week you're doing it for. Everybody's body is, is completely different. I know some people that really thrive on using a little bit more carbs than others, especially a lot of the keto guys that I've been in contact with lately. But some other people really don't mind it if they can use their, their body fat all the time. Some people can go out for a four hour run and not take anything other than water and that's perfectly fine. So it all depends on your level of adaptation. For me, whenever I'm doing my 3.5 miles, I really don't need to take any carbs in. I just go about that day and I do my regular exercises, my regular stuff, and I don't take any honey for that day. I also don't eat any of the Greek yogurt that I told you guys that I use because it just adds, like I said, a little bit more carbs and it's not a bad thing, especially since I am using them, but that's not the main goal. The main goal is to maybe use a little bit more on my body fat and then use maybe some of the other carbs just in case I really do need them like in a really intense workout. So I definitely take into account all those things, whether I'm tired from the previous day of workout or not, I'll definitely take that into account and maybe I'll take that tablespoon of honey or not. But this is something that you guys have to figure out on your own. You gotta figure out if it works for you guys. If you can do it with just fat, I really recommend it if fat loss is your goal. But if you maybe want that little bit of an extra push, that honey, for me in my case, that's what I like to use. Uh, it really helps me out. It's that little extra kick that makes me go an extra mile, that makes me go a little bit faster on my pace instead of maybe keeping a nine minute pace and dogging it throughout. I can definitely keep up a eight minute, eight minutes and 30 second pace throughout the 3.5 miles. And even if I was doing a seven mile run, I would still be able to push a very decent cadence of like nine minutes. And that's pretty decent for seven minutes, um, seven miles straight. I know there are some of you guys that are beast out there that are like six minutes per mile. That's some insane work props to all you guys I can't keep up with you yet <laughs> and finally if you guys want to be something a little bit more of a physical thing like a bodybuilder maybe I know a lot of people shame people for maybe going for the aesthetic look I just think people have different tastes I mean if you guys are going for the bodybuild look go for it if you guys want to be power lifters be my guest if you guys want to be the athletic all kind of round you know look lean, but at the same time still have a good build. It's your pick, guys, it's your life. It's one life, right? But if you guys are going into the bodybuilding side of all this, I really recommend that you up the intake of food, as well as with all these other options, especially the meat, red meats. I know a lot of the times in carnivore, people tend to pick out chicken, they can pick out pork, and a lot of other things, but try to pick out red meat and all these options above all. The reason for it is that red meat just has a lot more vitamins and you can source it a little bit better than most of the other animal products. And although it not, might not be cheaper, I think it's a lot more complete in the nutrient ratios, especially if you guys are trying to put on muscle in any of these um, categories. I think that meat inherently has a good amount of creatine on it. Creatine will help you out in endurance. It will help you out growing muscle. It will help you out with so many different things. We need a lot of creatine to help out with all these intensive types of workouts. So I would recommend that you eat a good portion of meat. If you're gonna be eating these quantities of meat, preferably try to get grass fed, grass finished, certified organic, because just because it's grass fed and grass finished doesn't mean it's certified organic. 
and in my next video I'll be talking about how I've been getting a lot more disappointed as I go through the meat industry and how everything gets processed but more on that on another video I I, <laughs> I don't want to get depressed right now helicopter See, we have gotten a complaint that you will not shut up on your videos and that they are too long, so sh shut it. <laughs> a SWAT team comes down, just opens the window and smacks me. <laughs> shut up. But yeah, if you guys are going for the bodybuilding side, definitely up your meat intake. If you're going for the athletic side, for the power lifting side, for the really explosive, really up the meat intake but above just increasing the quantity make sure it's quality guys it really makes a huge huge difference and on that note actually uh one of the things that i have noticed in my diet is that i switched from eating a lot of the regular store kind of bought meat that's corn fed and there's nothing wrong with corn fed and again i'll address this in the next video but there's definitely a lot more benefits to the grass fed grass finish i've definitely seen an improvement on my particular health just by switching from corn fed to grass fed and even though the corn fed wasn't bad quality it was like really good quality corn fed like some of the stuff that you will probably see in restaurants and that's because i just wanted to treat myself i was like you know what, if I'm gonna be eating this amount of meat and you know I'm not gonna be liking it all the time, maybe I can eat less of it and higher quality. And although that does work, I think the grass fit, grass finish at the end of the day ends up having a lot more nutrition and ends up helping out way more. And on that note, I wanted to show you guys this. So today is a very special day for me, guys, because I was able to get my hands on some Wagyu beef. Uh, this normally doesn't happen for many reasons, but the main one being that the realistic side of it is that Wagyu beef doesn't really exist in the US. Well, not traditional Wagyu beef from Japan. It does not exist. Uh, very rarely does it come in and I'm pretty sure if it was coming in from Japan that was being exported and imported here into the US, I'm pretty sure I, was, I would not be able to afford it or even get a piece or near a piece. So. To be fair, this isn't legitimate Wagyu, this is a substrand of Wagyu which was then bred into one of the cows from over here and so this is what I got. But nonetheless, it still has the marbling, it still has a lot of the qualities of regular Wagyu, it's just not 100% Wagyu. So what I have here is a, uh, four steaks of Wagyu and one of the main things that I wanted to show you is even though they're all Wagyu steaks, they're not the same in both quality of marbling and at the same time they're not the same cut. They're the same from Chuck but they're not cut in the exact same way. Let me show you. So there's two beautiful steaks here that I grabbed purposely and to show you guys I grabbed uh, other two that don't look as pretty and this is something that you guys are gonna have to navigate with whatever cut of meat that you guys have or want to buy especially if you guys go to a supermarket if you go to a supermarket and let's say you're trying to get the deal of the day let's say some of the ribeye steaks are I don't know $6.99 or something my recommendation is to go and pick the ones on the counter and those tend to look a lot prettier and it's not the case all the time but they tend to look a lot prettier because they try to display them so that people would go by see them and say oh that's a pretty beautiful cut of meat the ones that they pre-package that already come packaged or that the guys package back there they cut them in different sizes and stuff like that so my recommendation is to really inspect the meat that you guys are gonna buy. Just because they're ribeye steaks doesn't mean that they're all the same ribeye, doesn't mean that they're all the same quality, doesn't mean that they all have the same marbling. So I'm gonna cook these guys, well I'm gonna cook two of these Wagyu steaks, but I just wanted to show you that even though they are the same steak, they are cut the exact same way, they, are, they don't look the same. Now comes the reality versus expectation test. 
Yeah, this is ridiculously tender. Look, I'm barely even touching it and this thing's falling apart. This is an awesome piece of steak, but beyond the awesome part, I think it's very, very different. It's one, for one, it is super tender, it's super nice, but it is full of fat as what it's what you would expect from Wagyu I mean that's one of the reasons why you would buy it this is not something that you would have every day even if I could afford Wagyu every day I don't think it'd be healthy <laughs> eating that amount of fat <laughs> or to that extent unless you're a keto guy then you know go for it <laughs> you guys eat fat like there's no tomorrow but I'm just messing with you guys I don't think it's even even for somebody like keto I don't think it's healthy to eat this amount of fat it tastes great I gotta say it tastes awesome I mean I know why people travel halfway around the world to try stuff like Kobe beef and I can't imagine how the original tastes like how original Wagyu actually tastes but the crazy part about this is not the it's it's not the actual texture you can see like this thing's falling apart like this thing's actually falling apart right here. Like I can almost tear it apart. Ah. Tastes freaking awesome. I put some butter on the side and I was afraid to even put butter on top of it. All it has is salt and pepper and that's because I wanted to actually try the flavor of the Wagyu beef first. And now I'm gonna try it with some butter and see how that And yes, guys, I did let the steak rest for a little bit longer than I cooked it, actually. Supposedly, the rule of thumb is um, let it rest for as long as you cook it. I like to give it an extra minute or two. Now with the butter. I wouldn't say the butter retracts from it. It actually adds flavor to it, but the actual meat is so flavorful the, the wagyu taste the, the actual meat flavor is different i'm not even talking about the fat i'm pretty sure this piece of steak didn't even have fat um that much like marbling intramuscular marbling i'm pretty sure it would have some very very intense actual beef flavor and that's something that we will go into in another video is fat or marbling really really does determine if your piece of steak is full of flavor or not, which, again, the answer might surprise you on that one, guys. As far as the, the fat on this, it definitely tastes way different from grass-fed, grass-finished. It's not supposed to taste like grass-fed, grass-finished. It's, it's, it's The animal has been bred for a completely different purpose. Both of them, yeah, sure, are for consumption, but if you're looking into getting grass-fed, grass-finished stuff, you're mostly looking into the qualities, the uh, the benefits of eating a purely grass-fed animal, which will bring some of the beta carotene, a lot more of the nutrient profiles <clears throat> within it. When you're buying something like Kobe beef, it's not. It's actually probably fed a pretty good corn diet or something very similar to that. You're buying it because of the flavor, the, the flavor that the actual meat is gonna have, and corn flavor versus grass-fed flavor versus grass-fed grass finished is completely different or grass-fed corn finished um, dry age there's a bunch of different types and that's because they're all messing with the flavor wagyu in particular this one tastes awesome i really recommend it if you guys ever come across a piece of it and you know that it comes from a quality farm i really really suggest you guys buy it if anything just for the experience but make sure you guys know how to cook it. Make sure you, you let it rest for the appropriate amount of time and enjoy. And now I'm gonna enjoy mine, so. But we are back. That is it for today, guys. Thanks for joining me in another episode of Say's Experience. Hopefully you guys liked this video. Hopefully you guys got something productive out of it. So you got some information and hopefully it helped you guys clear out what your path might be on this carnivore diet. But if I have helped you guys out in any way, please hit that subscribe button. Please push that notification bell right after. That way you guys get notified every time I come up with a video such as this. Next time I'll be giving you guys a little bit of an update on where I'm going to start sourcing my meat and how deep I dove into all that world and how I'm kind of getting really depressed with all this carnivore diet and yeah it, it, I'll definitely leave it up for next video guys so till next time Zay out peace
Any questions, comments, or concerns, leave them down there. 